We're here at the biggest YouTuber event in the world. Mark Rober, Mr. Beast, Matt, Pat, Jenny Hoyos, they all come here. And we're gonna walk around, see if we can find some pretty cool big YouTubers to interview and get their best tips for growing a YouTube channel from zero. Good morning. Marcus. Matt. Really nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet really you nice too. to meet you. I run a YouTube channel that has 300,000 subscribers. Okay. It's all about basically giving advice to like smaller YouTubers. Yeah. Spatula from the Blue Microphone Company. Ooh, yeah. I love it's it. It's pretty fancy. That's pretty great. Cool. So our, the presentation that we have going on today yeah. has gone through a couple iterations. And one of the iterations, I was talking about how videos don't have to be expensive because I think nowadays you have this belief that like in order to be successful, it has to be fancy and high production value and this and that. And it's, no, like the truth that has always existed on YouTube is that you have something interesting to say and you say it in an interesting way, people will find it and it'll, it'll do well. For 10 years, I used the exact same $100 microphone and it did great and it served its purpose and it didn't hold us back at all. Audio though, as long as you get good audio, yeah. that's that's the most And a good quality spatula. And, oh, the spatula is huge, spatula. right? Yeah, yeah. What would you say for someone who's like really, really small? So we're talking like going from zero to a thousand subscribers. What's the best piece of advice you could give them? Learn. Take the opportunity to learn and try to teach yourself something new with every single video, mm -hmm. whether that is improving a little bit of your editing, trying something new with the way that you script a video, and experimenting with like a new thumbnail format or yeah. things like that. Because it is still early days, you have permission to try things and fail yeah. in a way that it gets harder and harder as more and more audience kind of builds up around you. So taking those early days to really find who you are as a creator and experiment with things that feel right to you and build that tool set, it's awesome. That's so valuable. That's really amazing. You mentioned a bunch of things there. Like just for people watching this who might be feeling overwhelmed, what would you say are like the, the main things that they should like go away and like start doing this thing right now? Number one is always gonna be audio. Like d that's just in general, right? If you have bad audio, people won't watch. Your camera could be out of focus, but as long as I can understand what you're saying and it's pleasant to listen to, you're great. Number two, focusing on your first 30 seconds of your video, right? Like that is your gateway into the video. That is what people are being introduced to you and your brand and what you have to say. So making sure that that is clear, concise, and compelling. Yeah huge and then not shortchanging your thumbnail like the unfortunate reality is at this point there's content everywhere and you're competing for everyone else's attention yeah. so making sure that you understand the best way to put yourself out there and to sell yourself in an honest way that's exciting and locking that in those are those are kind of your like top three learn these first and then you build out the rest of the skills from there. That's amazing. Yeah. And last question, what would you say is like a realistic timeline that small YouTubers, like literally starting from zero right yeah. now, should have in their mind when they're thinking about going from where they are now, zero, to like potentially being full time? What do you think is like a realistic timeline for some of those people? They should never think of that timeline. Do it because you're interested in it. Do it because yeah. you want to learn. Do it because it is fun for you. Steph and I, when we first got started, we always had the mantra of don't expect to make money off your blog. Back then, blogs were a relevant example to use. <laughs> Not so much now. Back on the MySpace. Yeah. Right, exactly. At this point, it's like, what's a blog? But it was one of those things where it was a creative outlet for me. Yep. It was a learning opportunity for me. And it was a resume booster to show, like, I have skills that are valuable. Over time, yes, we were able to make money. And yes, we were able to build that into something much bigger than we ever anticipated it being. But we were lucky. We found the right formula to make things work, which was great. Sometimes that happens, but a lot of times it doesn't. Yeah. And so you can make all the right decisions and that's just something not in the cards to work that way. So if you set these time bounds in your mind and you don't hit them, you don't want to be disappointed. You don't yeah. want to feel like a failure. But if you look at it as a learning process and as an opportunity to develop as a professional, yeah. that's huge. Because at this point in YouTube, the industry has evolved and grown so much that being a one man show or one woman show is fewer and farther between at this point. You have a partner who's an editor or a partner who's behind the scenes helping you with yeah. stuff. The skills that you learn from doing this, whether it gets a million views or zero views, is useful somewhere. You can get a job as a thumbnail artist at a different YouTube company. Those skills can translate into a marketing department. You can be a cinematographer. You could be a script writer. You can be SEO, you know, driving SEO and search engine optimization for big brand X. The skills that you learn here translate into so many different fields on platform and off platform. That's just, this is the way the modern society works and approaching it from that standpoint is the most valuable thing. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, man, I really appreciate your yeah, advice. Course. I know you're running off this. No, of course, my pleasure. Thank that you. That was of amazing. Course. That was wild.
Oh, they interviewed Matt Pat with special. This man has 40 million subscribers. I can't, I can't believe that. That was insane. Let's, let's go see who else we can find. Excuse me, man. Hunter? Yeah, 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 yeah. I would love to ask you guys a couple of questions. I'm going around basically asking YouTubers for their advice for like small channels. Yeah. So what are your guys' names, firstly? Uh, Drayton Williams. Drayton. Hunter Williams. Hunter? Yeah. All right, awesome. And what's your channel name? Hunter Williams. Hunter Williams. Hunter Williams. <laughs> there you go. And what would you say is the number one piece of advice you would give to someone who's like small channel starting from scratch? A big mistake that I made when I first started, dude, is I was such a perfectionist with everything. Like I would spend so much time choosing what the idea is, scripting, so much time filming and lighting and editing. Like I wanted everything to be perfect. It just took me forever to learn how to play YouTube, like the game, and also to learn what I wanted to do. Because I was going so slow and I was making yeah. videos that I did not want to make, but I spent like a year doing it. And after the 10th video, I was like, dude, I hate this type of stuff. What about yourself? I guess this, I have a different perspective. Coming from someone that started a channel one time and didn't get much traction, I think it's finding something that you can do for a long time. I was taking forever to post videos because I wasn't enjoying it a whole lot. And then we found something kind of like together where we are like, dude, we really love this. We're excited to post the new one. Yeah. So I think it's finding something you can do long term and that you constantly want to work on. Something that's really interesting that you guys mentioned is like not being perfectionist. But I think a lot of people maybe watching your content would say it's very high production value. How do you like balance not being a perfectionist, but also creating good content? And some people maybe find it hard to compete without being perfectionist. I struggle to not make everything perfect. The only solution I've found is setting deadlines, like hard deadlines. Yeah. Saying, hey, we are posting this video on this date, no matter what, like we have to. For like a video like yours, so like the ideation, what's your deadline? Like the process, like how long does it take to make one video? Yeah. Once we have the script and we go and film and edit it, like that's probably two weeks. Like, Hypothetical question. Yeah. Let's imagine that someone watching this literally has zero subscribers. they got a gun to their head and someone's like, you have to reach a thousand subscribers in 30 30 days or I'm gonna shoot you. So it's like life or death. Yeah. Like where are they spending their time? What are they focusing on? I think it's titles and thumbnails, man. I think that's what we've realized. It's like, obviously the content has to be good. It has to be entertaining. But with Hunter, I think that we focus so much on titles and thumbnails, like getting people together and maybe deciding what title or thumbnail that everyone in the small group would click on. Like everyone agrees that let's jump head first into that, make it as an entertaining as a video as possible. Yeah. So you guys get like your friends and stuff together and you guys will actually like see all the time and be like, which yeah. one would you guys click on? That's kind of like- one Yeah, of yeah. yeah. a thousand percent. Like we send concepts over to buddies and saying, hey, like, is this a good concept? Is this yeah. a good idea? It's such a simple, thing too because so much of the success of a video is determined by those things and it's so easy just to text it to a friend and him to be like oh like I don't like that idea or like oh, that's a crazy idea or we should just do this yep. so easy you can get like so much feedback that helps so much well thanks so much for your time yeah, guys. Dude, I really really so appreciate that sick, it's really great to meet you guys I was sick these guys have grown to over 100,000 subscribers with 15 videos that's, that's something to brag about let's see what else we can find Hey Jenny, yeah, how are you? Up? Marcus. Marcus. Nice to meet you. I feel like I've seen your face before. Really? Well, I'll take it. I would love to steal a minute of your time if you could basically share your advice to aspiring YouTube creators. Would you be down? We're trying to film something right now as well. Oh really? Yeah. Is, is now a bad time? Would you prefer no, me to come back? If it's It'll be like minute, two minutes. Fine. Yeah? Okay, yeah, sure. All right, you good? Good. Sick. All right, what is your name? Jenny Hoyos. And your channel? Jenny Hoyos. <laughs> how many subscribers do you have? I have 5.3 million. That's very impressive. A lot of people watching this right now, very small channels, they're trying to grow, struggling to get views. What's your advice to them? Outside of not quitting, I would say to be unique. I feel like everyone says that, but I think it's very important to steal what's trending and steal what's working from other people while finding your own style in that. So I do a lot of like trending challenges, pranks, or things that other people have done, but I like to insert my personal character in it and my own style so it has that unique twist and still gets millions of views. For example, like secret room videos are crushing it on YouTube. And I didn't want to do it for the longest time because I'm like, oh, that's so cringe. But it's like, you have to let go of that and just acknowledge like that is what's working and I made a secret room video and it's now the most viewed secret room video with the word secret room in the title at least. How many views did you get last month? Or let's go your most viewed month. 200 million. 200 million views in one yeah. month. So for someone who is looking to, let's say you have their first viral video, literally no experience. Is there any particular tactics or pieces of advice that you think they really need to focus on? Immediate action and getting right into the video. Like I know everyone always says get right into the video, but like the hook is already the start of the video. Like one of my most viral videos is 
is it faster to go inside or the drive-thru? And while I'm saying that, I am walking into the drive-thru while a car is pulling into the drive-thru. So the hook is, is it faster to go inside or the drive-thru? Because my mom is leaving in the car and I'm ordering inside. Definitely, that, that is the number one thing. Any final piece of advice you'd like to leave aspiring YouTubers with? You only lose when you quit. Love it. Thank you so much. It's nice to meet you. All right, I'll see you around. My channel name is Nate Wealth. My own channel has about 70k right now. How long did it take you to get that for your own channel? It was like a six month period. The first video got 200,000 views. I got monetized off that video. And then the next six months was just momentum, momentum. Kept posting. You blew up your channel in your first video. Someone who's watching this, literally at zero. What would you say is the best piece of advice that could help them do something similar? Definitely start with mindset. And when I say mindset, I don't mean like, oh, I'm going to blow up. Actually do quite the opposite. Don't expect to blow up with your first video because truthfully, you can do everything right. And if external factors, you know, the saturation of the niche, the demand for whatever topic just isn't there, you can make a perfect video and not blow up with your first video. I was fortunate that I ended up doing everything right. Yeah. And I entered the niche at a time where there were very, very few big channels in that niche making good quality content for a specific type of viewer and I just happen to obviously fulfill that. I really appreciate you saying that by the way because I feel like a lot of these YouTube strategists would ever kind of be like, oh, it's like not luck at all. I don't think YouTube success is luck. I think you can manage that luck though. Like you said, first video doesn't hit, the fifth video hits and then it feeds back into all your other content. Also figure out who your competitors are. Find channels way bigger than you that you can compare yourself to and you're just gonna compare all parts of your video to their videos and your old videos. And by doing that, you can single out parts of that video that actually made it blow up. Because there's always something, yeah. right? A lot of the times, to be honest, it's gonna be idea or content value or packaging. Yeah. So on that, modeling success is talked about quite a bunch. I think sometimes maybe what's hard for some people to define is like what success actually looks like. Like as a small YouTuber, are you talking like we're modeling videos for 500,000 views? Do we need like millions of views? It's all in the context of really your idea because in terms of view, counts, the biggest thing that's going to have an impact on the number of views you can get is actually your topic. If we have a video that's like how to make a really good landing page, realistically, we cap out at 100,000 views. Compare that to Minecraft funniest moments that caps out at 100 million views, right? We can have the same level of production value and get way less views. Yeah. So that has to be your number one consideration. If you are making videos for what we call a smaller total addressable market, for example, something more niche, educational is generally just is more niche than entertainment content. You just have to consider that. If you're making landing page videos, success is 10,000 views. If you're making Call of Duty videos, probably it's a million views. Again, find competitors in your niche doing really, really well. Just figure out who the top players are. You can use that to gauge exactly what's a good view count in your niche. Anything you want to leave people with? Any advice for the next generation of aspiring YouTubers? Definitely keep making content. Post as much as you can, but don't, don't just post to post, but do stuff you're passionate about. Don't worry about, oh, I want a profitable niche doesn't matter. If you go for a profitable niche, you're not gonna make good content at the end of the day. So definitely just go from the heart. Content is king as well. If you have really good production value, content is not top tier, then it doesn't matter. You can have really good content and bad production and get a ton of views. So definitely focus on content first. All right, man, appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. You're an amazing inspiring creator. Yeah, Tell me, man. Figuring it out. <laughs> so what was your channel name? Alex the Grape. How many subscribers? Yes. 26,000. I do have a few shorts that have gotten like a few million views. My most viral one has like seven point something. Seven point something million views. Yeah. And then like three million, one million. And what would you say is like the best piece of advice you could give to smaller struggling creators who are trying to hit like their first thousand subscribers? Just experiment as much as possible. I'm still a very small creator and I feel like failure just doesn't hit you as hard as if you're a big creator. So so this is the time to figure out what you want before you go viral. Yeah. So when you do go viral, you're doing something that you know you like and you're passionate about and you can take advantage of that virality and just take it to full time and everything. Nice. Yeah. And what would be your then top tip for someone who's trying to create their first viral video? I always like to quote Marcus Rowley who said the best thing that never happened to him was a viral video. Yeah. He just steadily grew and I think that sometimes virality can break you if you're not ready for it. Awesome man. Yes. Well I really appreciate your time and your advice. So Dude. Down there. Hey man. Hey Jordan. How are you man? Good, how are you? Good, good. I'd love to hear like your advice to the new generation of careers if you have 30 seconds. Sure. Go on sharing? Sure. That's sick. Are we good? So what's your name? Jordan. Jordan? Jordan what's your YouTube channel? Jordan Matter. Also, and how many subscribers do you have, man? 25 million. That's amazing. What kind of content do you create for people who don't know? Challenges with my daughter. Is there, like an example of a challenge that's worth doing? Sure. Like it would be a hide and seek challenge or like I showed her what it's like to grow up from 14 to 50. Just dynamics between father and daughter stuff. That's amazing. Man. So I'd love to hear a lot of people watching this, very small.
professional careers. We're talking like starting from zero kind of thing. What would be your advice to them if they want to get to the place where they have a channel with like five million subs like yourself? Consistency of posting and consistency of quality. Yeah. And also you want to find a lane that isn't oversaturated, but something that will have enough universal audience. Yeah. And then what you want to do is you want to find your own voice. You want to post regularly, I'd say once a week, same time, same day, every week. Yeah. And definitely make sure that the quality doesn't dip. So a quick question on that, because I've, you hear a lot of people obviously give advice about really needing really high quality videos and people might look at Mr. Beast videos and your videos and stuff. And for someone who's say working full time or studying full time and maybe they got a kid and they're paying bills, like that's a bit intimidating. Right. So them. I'm not talking about quality necessarily of production. I'm talking okay. about quality of storytelling. You can film on an iPhone, yeah. no problem. The one thing I would suggest you invest in is audio. Yeah. My right, bad audio kills the video. And so how would you recommend someone actually goes about, say, learning good storytelling, like you said? Make it personal. Like, what is the story you personally want to tell? What is it that you have to share with an audience that's valuable, the story only you can tell, and then do that story? Is there an example of, like, one of your favorite stories that you've told? The last video we just posted, I got an actress who looked exactly like my daughter, and I let my daughter watch herself grow up from 14 to 50, yeah. and then be able to make adjustments to the life to take it in a different trajectory. And so it was storytelling that was based on a personal thing. I personally am freaked out about my daughter growing up. So it resonated because that's the truth of my reality. And it was a unique concept. Is there any like parting words of advice that you would give to anyone watching this who's maybe feeling a bit disheartened? They feel like they've been consistent for a while. But they're just not getting the views. If it's not getting the views, it's probably because you haven't found the right lane. When you say lane, what do you mean by that? I started out doing photography videos. So I was a photographer and I found a challenge, like do a 10 minute photo challenge, get somebody, a dancer in the streets of New York, 10 minutes, how many shots can I take? high energy entertainment, taking a kind of a boring niche of photography, making it entertaining. That is a lane, and then I expanded it to make it entertainment. If you have kids and you want to do family stuff, then the lane is family content, but you got to find your unique way of telling those stories so you're not just copying everybody else. Everybody kind of wants to be Mr. Beast, right? So Jimmy does these huge challenge-based videos, giveaways and all that, so people try to do something similar, but it always gets watered down unless you find something unique about you, where you live, what your personality is, who your friends are, something. People like all authenticity. If you're not connecting with people, it might be that you're not leaning into your authenticity. I mean, literally people watch an hour long fishing video because they like the people talking to each other, but it's the most boring thing on earth. But it gets 20 million views and it has a retention of 80% with an hour long video, right? Because they found their lane. Well, I really appreciate the Good advice, luck. dude. Take care. Thank you so much, mate. I felt so lucky to have talked to so many brilliant creators at VidSummit. They had some incredible insights, but more than that, it was freeing to hear that there seems to be more than one way to succeed on YouTube. Most of these creators shared different advice, different tips, different strategies, different mentalities, but there was one thing they clearly had in common. A mentality that I think Jenny summed up so eloquently. You only lose when you quit. Oh, and if you'd like to hear my personal method for growing YouTube channels, you can click the video on screen. I'll walk you through a full step-by-step -step breakdown of the most efficient ways I personally have found to get more views. Hope you enjoyed the video.